Okay, back to a uh, bit more normal length slide here. Uh, talking about the culture of the 1950s uh, society. And let's start with some technological uh, stuff. The development of the transistor. Um, and really the big deal about the transistor, um, it sparks this uh, revolution in electronics. What it does is shrink the size of things. Uh, we go from, especially in, like radios, we'll use the radio as an example. Uh, we go from in the 30s and 40s, big living room size radios. You know, they sat in your living room and the whole family gathered around them. By the time we get to the 50s, the transistor, uh, the invention of that, allows the radio to shrink from a big living room model that a whole family could gather around to a small handheld size radio. It was called a transistor radio. Um, and it made a... I, it, it shrinks things and it makes music portable. Um, computers start to uh, be invented and developed in the 1950s. Um, so the, the transistor is a big deal in terms of technology, as is aerospace uh, industries. These, uh, these are companies like Boeing. Uh, you see there on the screen their logo. Um, Jet aircraft start to be applied to passenger airline business. Um, in 1957, Boeing introduced the first uh, large passenger jet, the Boeing 707. Uh, two years later, 1959, Boeing uh, built the first presidential jet, Air Force One. Um, so aerospace industries start to employ lots and lots of people. Um, as cross-country and intercontinental uh, airline travel becomes commonplace, becomes normal. Right? Um, the 1950s will also see the development of fast food. Uh, with so many people living in the suburbs and so many people having uh, access to automobiles, uh, families or you know, dad would stop on the way home and pick up dinner, pick up fast food uh, for the family when they got home. There you see a picture of uh, McDonald's, the first McDonald's uh, fast food restaurant would open in 1948 in California. That's a picture there. Um, so as people are more mobile, fast food becomes very popular. Stop and grab something quick on the way. As a result, some families started spending less time together uh, around the dinner table. Um, as you grabbed something quick on your way in or out. If you're talking about 1950s culture, you got to talk about these next two things, uh, television and rock and roll. So let's talk about, uh, whoops, get back to my highlighter. There we go. Let's talk about TV, uh, first of all. The 1950s is known as the golden age of television. Um, this is when we see such, you know, iconic um, television programs such as I Love Lucy, uh, The Andy Griffith Show, uh, Gunsmoke. You know, these are um, uh, television shows that would set the standard against which all other TV shows would be judged. Right? Um, but that being said, by and far, in a way, not even close, the most popular TV shows of the decade are Westerns. Um, shows such as uh, Zorro, uh, the Lone Ranger, uh, Rawhide, which starred Clint Eastwood, a very, very young Clint Eastwood, uh, Gunsmoke, which would be the longest-running uh, primetime television show in history, uh, starts in the late 50s. Uh, Westerns are very popular. These are, a lot of these were shows that started as radio shows and then just moved over to TV um, when that becomes popular. Um, Religion is also going to use television. Here you see a picture of Billy Graham, a uh, very popular preacher. Uh, and religion preached, you know, a lot, had a lot of problems with TV that, you know, um, the morals were, were, were low and it showed things you shouldn't be watching. So religion decided, you know, why fight it? Uh, let, let's embrace it and let's use it. So you get something called televangelists, okay? Televangelists, um, T-E-L-E-V-A-N-G-E-L-I-S-T-S, -E -E 
televangelist, T-E-L-E-V-A-N-G-E-L-I-S-T-S. Um, and televangelist, whereas an evangelist was a preacher. So it's an evangelist, a preacher who goes on television, so a televangelist. Um, uh, big names, such as, I showed you, uh, Billy Graham there, uh, Oral Roberts, who founded Oral Roberts University, which is still around today. Uh, there was a Catholic archbishop in New York City um, who went on television. This is the beginning of TV church okay, uh, and TV religion. Sports would also capitalize on the boom of uh, television here um, as they would follow the... Uh, the sports teams would follow the population. So if the population is moving south and west to the Sun Belt states, so are sports. Um, in 1958, uh, the most famous moves, uh, the New York Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers, two famous baseball teams, uh, the New York Giants would head out west, as would the Brooklyn Dodgers, and become the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, that happens in 1958. Uh, and television allows those fans in New York to still be fans because they can watch games on TV. Now, it wasn't like cable nowadays. You could watch every team every night. You may get a game of the week. Uh, but chances were pretty good um, it was going to be the Dodgers or the Giants. Okay. Um, now, it wasn't a real popular move, as you see the little button here. Keep the Dodgers in Brooklyn. Not everybody wanted them to move. Uh, most people in New York were pretty peeved that they left, but people in California were thrilled that they had arrived. Okay. All right, that's TV, the new home entertainment option. Big money for advertisers, um, big money for um, stars, for producers, and so forth. Another big money maker is rock and roll. We get a new form of music. Um, uh, as... Uh, the big name, as you see on the screen here, would be Elvis Presley. Okay? Uh, Elvis is one of the earliest, biggest names in rock and roll. Okay? Uh, Elvis was what's known as the first successful crossover musician because he was the first um, white musician to appeal to black audiences. And he was the first white musician to successfully sing traditionally black music. Right? Uh, the real money to be made was by white musicians, but Elvis sang black music. Uh, his manager was famous for saying, if I could find a white man who sang like a black man, I'd make a fortune. Well, Elvis was that man. Right? Um, he takes uh, the rhythm and blues of black music jazz music, and R&B music, and he mixes that with white bluegrass and country music. Elvis started as a country music singer, um, but he takes that uh, and mixes them together and forms a new type of music that gets called rock and roll. There is a DJ, uh, a radio disc jockey playing music on the radio, uh, whose name is Alan Freed, F-R-E-E-D. Alan Freed, F-R-E-E-D, uh, is the man who coins the term rock and roll. He's the guy who comes up with that name to describe this new type of music. And rock and roll is popular with teenagers. Okay? Um, adults hate it. Okay? Uh, they don't like the hard-driving rhythm. They don't like some of the sexually suggestive lyrics, um, especially the early musicians like Elvis, like uh, Chuck Berry, like Little Richard, um, Fats Domino. These are all names um, that would be early rock and roll stars, and parents can't stand them, and teenagers love them. Now, rock and roll succeeds when it does for two big reasons with the teenagers. Okay? One is money. Teenagers have their own money to spend in the 50s. Okay? Middle class families are doing real well. They're making plenty of money, and if teenagers work a job, it's for spending money. And what are they doing with that money? They're buying rock and roll records, and they're going to rock and roll concerts. Um, and they're seeing movies starring these, these big names. Okay? 
Um, so teenagers have their own money to spend, and they're spending it on rock and roll. And the other big reason that rock and roll succeeds when it does is portability. The music is portable. Transistor radios allow teenagers to take their music with them. Car radios allow teenagers to listen to rock and roll music in the car when they go. Okay? Uh, if it were up to parents to allow teenagers to listen to rock and roll music in the big living room radio, rock and roll would have failed. Rock and roll could not have succeeded at any time before this. It comes along at the perfect time when technology is with it. Okay? If rock and roll had come along 10 years earlier, it would have failed miserably. Okay? Uh, but money and portability uh, allow teenagers to make rock and roll a hit. Okay? Um, now, rock music is a problem and TV is a problem for lots of people because it gets blamed for the decline in morals. A lot of people say that morals went right down the toilet in the 1950s. Okay? Um, Elvis Presley's su sexually suggestive dancing um, on TV. His nickname was Elvis the Pelvis uh, because he would, you know, dance, throwing his hips all around the place. Um, and that just wasn't done, you know. Uh, it was a fam very famous uh, uh, filming of Elvis. He goes on a famous TV program, The Ed Sullivan Show. Um, and Ed Sullivan agrees to put Elvis on, but on the condition that he only film him from... Uh, the waist up. He refused to show Elvis's, you know, th pelvic thrust, his gyrating hips and all of that. Um, so rock and roll gets blamed for a lot of this, as does TV, uh, movies, things like that. Marilyn Monroe uh, was a big star of the 50s, uh, and her on-screen kind of sexuality uh, was a problem for a lot of parents. Um, Playboy magazine, launched in 1953, kind of adding fuel to the fire. So, you know, um, morals certainly took a hit in the 50s. I don't know that music um, and TV can be blamed for all of it, but it certainly uh, did its fair share.